Hello Mavericks, this is Rob Reinhold, this is The Trading Room, and it's good to be back after a month away. I'm joined by Mr. Darren Fisher, and I want to thank the team for uh, jumping in for me while I'm gone. But now I'm back, here we are heading into the last week of February, first week of March, and we have a very active market. Now, if you go back through what has happened over the past six weeks of this year, we had a massive rally off the bottom, about a 14, 15% rally. And about two weeks ago, we topped out and we pulled back. And last week in the trading room, we talked about how we just closed below the 20 period moving average, which was our first signal to get a little less bullish. And we talked about if we break through the 50 moving average, then that's going to have to be to where we back off completely off of the bullish position that we had been taken. That's exactly what happened this week. We're down to the 50, we pierce below it, and we close slightly below. We'll take a look at all these charts here in a second. But we are currently right around the 50 period moving average. We tried to bounce on Wednesday, and on Thursday, we had a terrible candle. We gapped up, lost it all, and by the end of the day, it barely recovered. And then today, we had a really nasty report out. We had the PCE report that came out. It was much hotter than expected. This is the Fed's preferred number, and the market did not like it at all. Now, let's talk about what happened when this number came out. Now, remember, we've had slightly higher CPI, PPI. The inflation numbers were slightly higher, but the market was still like, hey, you know what? I think we could handle it. This number changed everything. We saw the 10-year bond spike. It's trading up near 4%. We've seen the U.S. dollar spike. This is exactly the criteria that we saw all of last year that caused the bear market. Here we are, we're exactly there and we're seeing the equity market suffer because of it. We are down below the 50 period moving average for the first time in a couple of months. So Darren, you've been the inflation hawk from the get go. You've been very consistent on this and very accurate. What did you think about that PCE number? You know, I, I wrote there, I wrote slightly hot, but you know, it was only it was the uh, forecast was for 0.4 percent. It came in at 0.6 percent. There's just so much uh, there's there's so much underlying inflation right there that you know, when the Fed puts a flag in the ground and says this is the number that we're going to be looking at for for whatever reason. I mean, it used to be other other numbers throughout the course of history have uh, taken the Fed the Fed's attention, but they've come out and said we're looking at the PC uh, number right there. When you put a flag in the ground like that, you better hope that your analysts, your economists are able to forecast correctly. And so far, they haven't had a very good history of hitting that number on the spot. Now, if their forecast had been for 0.6% and it came in at 0.6%, I think the market would have largely shrugged a lot of this off. Where the market, the market's getting tired of the Fed getting surprised. The market's getting tired of getting surprised by this PCE number. So any deviation from it that's over the actual forecast, it really casts doubt on does the Fed have a true idea of what's going on in the, in the economy? And I think that's, a, you know, that's kind of a side reason why I think we went down. But you've got to take a look. If, if there's no faith that the Fed actually knows what they're doing, then the idea that they could achieve this, you know, quote, you know, soft landing, just goes flying at the window, and I, I never, I, I've never su subscribed to the idea that the Fed could achieve a soft landing. They never have. They've always overshot. But this time um, it's different. But... Dangerous words. <laughs> Dangerous words for a trader to ever say. This time it's different. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's the thing. And they've the problem is they sat on their hands for too long. And you're exactly right. This last rally, this last fifteen percent rally, was on the belief that the Fed was about done. The market had priced in three 25 point rate hikes in January, March, and April. That's what they priced in. This number that came out, it takes all that away. The market is going to have to rethink how high rates are going because it's not priced in at the moment. And that's really why we're seeing the pressure on the market. So let's take a look at what the market actually did here this week. Uh, Dow down 3%, S&P down almost 3%, Q's down 3%, Russell 3%. As you can see, everything went down except for oil. This was just a big risk-off move to the downside. 
let's jump into the charts. So here we have the S&P. Last Friday when we did the trading room, we talked about how we were below the 20 and it's time to start to get a little bit more defensive. As you can see, the last time we were below the 20, other than this one little day here, was back in the very first of January. So we've been saying, hey, we need to be plus two bullish to the upside here. Here we said, okay, plus one, let's back off a little bit. And then here we are below the 50. Now look, there's a lot of times that markets pierce moving averages. I'm going to go back to November. We pierced a moving average back here. So you can't overreact when a moving average is pierced or you're going to get shook out quite a bit. We're going to need to see a little bit more confirmation. I am not ready to say that the 50-day moving average has been broken. I need to see probably one or two more red candles and then maybe even a retest of the moving average to the upside before I can really confidently say that we truly have changed trends. But we're close. We're within a couple candles away from saying, hey, you know what? It is now confirmed. We're below the 50. Let's get more short than long. It's starting to look that way. These two candles, we were supposed to bounce these two days. Take a look at those two candles. Not great bounces. We did have some buyers come in at the end of the day to kind of rescue this again. So I see us just on this precipice where if we just go a little bit further, everything falls down. So that is on the SPY. That's on the S&P. The Nasdaq is actually looking a little stronger. So tech is outperforming right now. And that actually gives me a little hope for bulls. So if you're bullish, this is one of the things that you can look at and say, hey, the NASDAQ is not below its 50-day moving average. It's not even close. Okay, this is one of those leading indicators that usually technology, when the market's going up, will outperform. And on pullbacks, it will also outperform the rest of the market. Okay, this is one point in the, okay, it might just be a slight pierce of the moving average before it moves higher. But let's go and check the VIX because the VIX has now changed a little bit. As you can see, for the first time since, uh, boy, all the way back to October, we are above the moving averages. I don't want to put the moving averages as all that important on the VIX. It's just not a real important indicator when you take a look at the volatility index. But we can see that things have changed. The trend has been down. The trend has been moving down. We've had one little rally here, but for the most part, the trend has been down. We are now trending up and you can see the 20 period moving average is turning up for the first time in six months. We have to not ignore this to say, okay, the VIX has changed. If the VIX has changed, that means that's another confirmation that the market direction, the trend has probably changed as well. Darren, what do you think about this VIX here? I still think it's too low. If I would just look at the fix as a measure of complacency um, with the move we've had this week, uh, I think there's still too much hope in the markets. Um, you know, you, I mean, we, we came, we were, we were way below the 20 period moving average just last week. I mean, look at that long red candle at the bottom and we were, we were hitting the lows right there. And we've, we've come up considerably. I mean, we've come up from, you know, about the 19 level all the way up to 22, which is a pretty decent move. But you take a look at the, the you know, a 3% down move pretty much across every, every major market in one week. And now we're at the 50 period moving average on the S&P. We're definitely below the 20. We've got a lot of velocity to the downside. I think the, I think the, I think the market is just a little too complacent right now. If we were up at the 24 level, I would say, okay, maybe we could pause here and get a bounce. But there's just not enough fear in the market right now. I, I think the market's going to take some time to, as you said, reprice what the Fed's going to do. And I think they're going to be slow. I think, we're, I think we've got some more downside here. I, I don't think this VIX is reflective of, of how much fear needs to be in the market right now. Yeah, and if you're not all that familiar with the VIX, the volatility index is a measure of how many calls and puts are being bought on the S&P contract. So basically, it's how many people are hedging. And right now, it's saying that not a lot of people are hedging. Now, remember, when people hedge, it means they they buy puts on the S&P. So if the S&P goes down, their portfolio doesn't drop as much because they've bought puts and it's offsetting some of the losses they're taking. So then they don't need to sell their stocks. When people are unhedged, 
they either need to go get hedged or they need to sell stocks. And so I'm with you, Darren. The market is not fearful enough for there to be a significant bounce here, in my opinion. And this is another reason why I do think we are going to move lower. So this week, we've got the market at a 50. I'm not ready to call out bearishness, but it could be two candles away. And I could come out and say, hey, you know what? That is the signal. Now I'm going to be net short. At this point, I'm more net neutral in my trades. At some point, I'm going to be going to net bearish. This week, um, we have some news, and let's take a look at that. We do have durable goods orders on Monday. You can ignore those. No one really cares about those at the moment. On Tuesday, I think the Richmond Manufacturing Index is a key here. This is the only number, these regional manufacturing numbers are the only numbers that have been weak in the economy. All the other numbers have been blockbuster. So we get this one, and then the next day on Wednesday, we get the manufacturing of the entire nation, the ISM index. If this number is strong, the market won't like it. Now remember, good news is bad news and bad news is good news right now. A very strong manufacturing number is only going to say to the Fed, we need to hike more aggressively and the market isn't going to like that. And then on Friday, we get the services number. Same thing there. If you are bullish, you actually want these numbers to come in not bad. You don't want it to be terrible, but you want them to be not great. You want them to be in the middle, lukewarm. That's going to be the best number for you. If they come out too hot, then all of a sudden, people are going to be really worried that the Fed is going to step in. When we take a look at everything technically and we score everything, we are at the 50-day moving average. So at this point, we're at a negative one. So we can slightly, slightly bearish. If we get more confirmation, this will go to red and that'll be a negative two. And that's when we can now get more aggressive on the bear side. I've got a negative one for the week. And I think, uh, Darren, you're in agreement with that? Absolutely. I, I think it's a drift down, um, at least for the first few days. At least for the first few days. Once, once, the, once everything uh, pans out there, then it, I think there's a possibility of a sharp move Thursday or Friday. But the first couple of days, I think it's gonna be a pretty steady move. Yeah, so you're saying it could be a negative two plus one kind of week, where we're weak on yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we bounce back a little bit. I can totally, totally get on board with that. So let's take a look at the sectors. Yeah, the sectors are, are showing a really interesting story. I mean, last week we started to see it, that everything was starting to contract. Uh, we'll see it on the histogram right here, but everything, uh, not on histogram, We'll see when we rack and stack everything. You can see right here, we were weak across the board. Okay, materials and energy, the only two that held up there, energy was the only one that had a gain. Uh, consumer really took it hard, you know, down four and a half percent. You know, communication services down, you know, almost four, same with real estate. And every other thing was, you know, almost down 3%. Financials didn't, didn't do as bad. I mean, they're, they're one of these sectors that actually uh, had them at a zero last week. And we're gonna see they're at a zero this week here. So they didn't go down as much either but it was just this weakness across the board and people taking money you know, communication services have been has been pretty good people are taking money out of it but you're going to see we were a lot of these things that were strong that we had at you know plus ones last week nothing had hit a plus two last week and a lot of these things that were a plus one they're now at zeros we're going to see that here so let's take a look at utilities itself so as negative one on utilities, and I'm still to negative one right here. Um, if it breaks below that 66 level on any type of, of volume, if we get more velocity to the downside right there, I could easily go back to a negative two. But so far, this has just been a slow bleed. I mean, your your next target down there is going to be 64. The only question is, do we get there in a week or do we get there in three weeks? And I think the issue that we're having in utilities with the Fed raising interest rates, rates the way it is, with the tenure going to 4%, a lot of these coupons a lot of these dividends on these utilities, which are what a lot of people buy utilities for, the price has to come down in order for that dividend to, you know, I'm not going to say equate with the 10-year yield, but to have some sort of uh, a parity with it, you know, so that uh, you, when the rates are rising like this, you the people that invest in utilities for the income, they want to get some sort of a measurable rate. Uh, that is at least comparable to the to the ten year. So that's why you're going to see the asset price go down, but the yield is going to rise. 
So I think that's the situation we're in in utilities. Looking at communication services, okay, we were at a plus one last week. We're at a zero this week. I mean, this came down hard. I, I was giving it the benefit of the doubt that it was just sticking right up there at the, you know, just had barely pierced that 20 period moving average on Friday. We were in a nice base and it was a slow bleed down up until Thursday and we had that gap down. Uh, so I'm, we're still above the 50, but we're stuck between those moving averages. I'm at a zero right now. I want to say, see which way this thing, uh, this thing goes. We could get a bounce off that 50, uh, in which case, you know, I, I'd say, okay, it was just an orderly bull pull back to the 50 and you could make this into a zero or plus one scenario right there. Uh, this is one that's, that's held up pretty nicely, especially in the last six weeks. I mean, this, this said some pretty good gains right there. Uh, we'll see if it can keep them up. Real estate last week, I was in a zero. Got below that 50, but in, in a negative one. Well, Darren, why aren't you to negative two? It just, the, the velocity, it's just barely poked through. If we continue our, our march down, I mean, you've got a target there at about the 3650 level uh, is, is probably your next target. You know, if we go down there, if we go and, and retest that 50 period moving average, um, I just keep it at negative one. If we can, if we can regain it, I'd be at a zero again. But I think the reward risk right now is actually to the downside in real estate. Industrial is another one that got downgraded. We had a plus one last week. We're at a zero right now. Uh, it's just it's sitting right there at the fifty. And the only reason I'm not going to I'm not going to say it's below it because it's still it's about the midpoint of the range that it's put in uh, since December. And you you take a look at at this this channel that we're in. It looks like we're just we're just staying in the channel. We're in the middle of the channel, so I can't say even that we're at or slightly below the the fifty that this is a truly bearish sector because we've got three months of uh, of trading sideways in a channel, and you know I, industrials have been one of those things that have actually held up pretty good. And, you know they've been plus one plus uh, you know even a plus two for the past several weeks. They've only you know this is the first the second time this year that I've been at a zero on industrials. Otherwise, they, uh, this has been a sector that's been uh, pumping out nice singles, a couple of doubles for us. Um, you know, we're gonna, you know, I'm gonna take a more neutral stance on it right now until until the market shows us otherwise. Healthcare, okay, this has been in a negative one. We're down now down in a negative two. You can see uh, we've just accelerated to the downside right there. I mean, this is I think is is going to be a, a a true negative two. You've got a little bit of support back there that we set in way back in October. Uh, the uh, you know, little swing high that we had there in October, we're coming pretty close to that right now. And that's not a lot of strong support right there. We, we were only up there for a couple of days. We you know, went back down to tested lows, then we finally got up through it. So there's not a lot, it's not a good pit stop uh, for this to bounce off of. This could easily be broken. Then I think we're looking back down at October lows. You know, I think you go down to that 121 level is you know, where we could end up. And healthcare has been weak. Healthcare has been weak this year, uh, pretty much the entire time. It's been mildly weak, but we're accelerating to the downside. Healthcare, financials. It was at a zero last week. I'm still at a zero this week. It held the 50 period right here. Uh, this, you know, you have to technically say, you know, this is just a, a pretty orderly bull pullback. Now, this is this is going to be an interesting way to try to quantify this because we're in such a tight range in financials, there's not a whole lot of room between that 50 period moving average and that 20 period moving average. So if you're using criteria like this, and you should be, within a period of a week, you can go from a zero to a plus one to a plus two and not have a lot of true price movement here. When the when the averages get so compressed like this, the market action gets so compressed, uh, you could feel yourself getting whipsawed. So if you if you want to say, okay, I'm just going to take a look at stuff in financials that I can play sideways to slightly up, sideways to slightly down, you know, those wide butterflies uh, with a short time period, that might be the way to go uh, to play financials. And looking at consumer, you know, it was at a plus one uh, for a couple of weeks right there. I mean, it had been at a plus two uh, about a month back, uh, but now I'm at a zero. You know, we, we just kind of fell apart. We're pinned between those moving averages. I think you, you've got some support that we recently put in there at about the 142 level. Uh, you know, we've got several candles at that at that point right there. So that's a first bounce place. 
Uh, then right below it, you've got the 50 period moving average. So that's a nice little band of potential support for uh, for consumer, uh, which we'd probably, if we get down to that place and we don't bounce, I think we'd base there for a little bit. Uh, but then you know, you, you, you've got more support at 135 and then 130. Uh, if we get down that uh, that low, I think we do accelerate to the downside. Looking at tech, we were plus one last week. Again, peg between the moving averages. And we we're going to see this when we, we stack everything together. There's a lot of stuff that is just pegged between that 20 and that 50. And this is right smack dab in the middle of it with a doji candle on Friday. Uh, this could go either way. You know, this could definitely go either way. So again, don't expect too much out of your trades. Pick the stuff that you can you can do uh, you know theta positive when you can, and uh, you know, make the short make the shorter term trades in a market like this. Uh, I, I would even, I would say keep your trades to a much shorter time frame. In some cases, I'd say go out six, seven, eight weeks, nine weeks even if you can do it, and play the long game that way. But it, at an inflection point in the market like this, uh, I don't want to make a call that tech is going to bounce back in, in the next two months. So I think we've just got to wait and see which way the uh, which way the market drags us. Materials. And we were in zero, we've been in a zero for the past three weeks of materials. And you know, we were below that 50 period moving average. I'm calling it today. We are at the 50 period moving average on the on materials right here. And but again, I mean, this is one of those things, you know, you go back to December and we've got you were in a nice channel between 78 and 84, or 77 and 84, right? You're right about there. So we're just at the mid-range of this channel. And you know, do we bounce right up and we talked about this at the year review this and it's it's playing out really well this is going to be one of those choppy years that is uh where your moving averages are going to be crossing they're going to get very compressed it's a very choppy way to trade uh much more difficult to make money in this type of market in than in a trending market whether that trend be up or down you've really got to take a look at um at the at the theta place i think and this is shaping up we said it was going to be choppy and so far, we've we've done pretty good for at least at least the first six weeks of this year. Looking at energy, we were in a negative one last week. We're still in a negative one. And again, I mean, this is in a we're right at the lower end of this channel that we've uh, been in since December. So that's right there. We break below that, and I'm happy to go to a negative two. But it's the you know this is the name of the game for about three or four sectors here. It's just channel trading, just sideways. Uh, with some, you know, movement. I mean, yeah, you, you're looking at about 10%, you know, 12% movement uh, in that range, but that's still just a range. We have to treat it as such. So looking at everything, healthcare is looking the the uh, weakest at negative two. Energy, real estate, and utilities all at negative one. We got five sectors that are at a zero: tech, consumer, industrials, communication services, financials, and materials. Those are all either in channels or peg between their moving averages of uh, kind of a murky but you if you remember if you go back and watch last week's video we were much more spread out between negative one and plus one there was nothing that was a plus two nothing that was a negative two you can see we're switching a, we're making that shift as a market slowly getting back um to the downside so you know at this point with our outlook being a negative a negative one you can see you got five sectors that you can play just sideways and stagnant, and only a few to the downside. There's not a whole lot out there that is looking wow for uh, bullish trades. And speaking of that, let's take a look at the trades. So last week we had a uh, we had a March third butterfly, uh, 12, 13, 14 butterfly on Sabra, and that was just a, a, a nice little uh, what we thought was going to be a sideways trade, and we've got a week left on it. And this came hard to the downside. So if this can, uh, it's only got a dollar to move. If this can inch its way back up to towards the 13 level, I mean, we're, we're probably sitting at break even right now with a week left. But if you can uh, march your way back up towards it, you know, get there with get out there with a small game. And this, you know, this doesn't move incredibly fast. And you look at the scaling on it, you got 20 cent scaling. Um, and we're just playing, you know, a, a $2 wide butterfly. This could easily come back. Um, you know, I, I would expect it. I mean, this is the bottom end of a little channel. We've got some support right there that we put in December. Uh, so I, it, a bounce would not be unexpected for me, you know, at least inching its way back up towards 13. I don't think we we 
hit that 13 level. I don't think this is going to be a, a Cinderella trade here in the next week, but I do think we come out of this with a with a small gain uh, with one week left to go. This week we're looking at VNO, Vernado Real Estate Trust. We're going to play this sideways to bearish. You know, go out to March 17, do a 21, uh, 2021 bear call spread here. We're not asking it to do a whole lot. We're just saying, please hang out where you are. That's it. You know, if you want to go down towards the 20, that's great. And you know, we said it last week. I mean, this is the season for chicken bulls and chicken bears. Uh, that's just the the thing that you want to play right now. Uh, you know, in a you know, I think a one dollar uh, bear call spread is the way to play this. You're probably going to pull. Probably pull about 40 cents out of this. Uh, maybe you, know, you might be able to, if you can get 50, take it. Um, but don't expect much more than that, you know, that much for credit. And communication services. Last time we were uh, long uh, Warner Brothers Discovery. And we went out to uh, the March. We were long the monthly March 14s. And we shorted the uh, this Friday's today's 16s on it. Let's well, close at 1555 really can't ask for a whole lot else so right now you've you're still long the 14s unless you looked at those today you pulled out a really nice uh gain from you know those uh short 16 calls right there if you think this is going to base uh take another look at maybe another diagonal if you think it's we're going to get weakness then i just liquidate the whole trade and, and take the game I mean, this, this turned out pretty good as far as uh you know a theta play for us Right now we're looking at Dish Network. And we play this one sideways to bearish. Go out to March 10, so this is gonna be a couple weeks out. We're gonna do that 12, 14 bear call spread right here. As long as, and, you know, it's a little $2 spread, you know, going right there, you're gonna pull, you've got a $1.37 in intrinsic value right now. Uh, you could probably pull, let's see, if, if you can get, I'd say a buck 60 out of this, a buck 50 or a buck 60 out of this, then I, I'd take the trade. Uh, if you can't, then I, I, I let it go or find something else, pick a, pick a new strike. Yeah, healthcare, last time we were uh, short uh, interactive surgical. Uh, yeah, make, make sure I'm not saying, saying intuitive surgical, that, that kind of happens, falls out as interactive surgical, we were short. We've got the um, next week's uh, March 3rd, 235, 240 bear call spread. This closed at 231.05. So you know this went right where we wanted it to go very, very quickly. Uh, and I think it looks like it's going to be weak. If it starts to inch back up towards, there's only five days left on this trade. If it starts to inch back up towards that uh, that two, um, 235 level, I think I'd, I'd, I'd pick it up because this moves pretty fast. You know, you, you look at it, you I mean, this could have a $10 move quite easily within within a week. It starts to inch back up towards that 235 level. I'd liquidate the position, take the game. This week we're looking at Walgreens, WBA, Walgreens boots, a nice low base. And we're, again, we're going out March 10, uh, two week trade on 34, 36 bear call spread. You know, right there, short that one. We're just right there. Now this is a delta play more than it is a theta play. You're gonna get a little bit of theta out of this, but you're depending on this to go down towards that, uh, that 34 level. Okay, so you're gonna, when you enter this trade, it's gonna look like you're at your max loss point when you enter the trade. But the good thing is, you, you, if it goes up, you're really not you're really not losing anything else at all. You're pulling a really good credit from this, but it just has to go down uh, towards that 34. I think it does. If we have any weakness in the market, I think it this um, you know, this breaks, and I think this is going to break hard. Last week we had paychecks. Now paychecks was moved into the industrial sector. I don't really understand why, but we had a sideways trade on this. And the stock actually weakened quite a bit last week. So we had the 110, 115, 120. That was our butterfly we had. And so we wanted it to stay closer to the 115 area. You can see that we are now drifting down to the bottom of our range here. We need this to come back up just a little bit for it to be profitable. This is why we love butterflies that if this just breaks down and runs lower, we take our small loss and we will move on to the next trade. But this one it could come back. We'll have to see what happens on this. Nice two candles here on Thursday and Friday. Even though they were down days, they still had more buyers than sellers. This week, we're looking to be a little bit more bullish here in the industrial sector, UAL, United Airlines. So we have this nice high base. 
This is one of the big questions of, you know, how do you play a stock that is strong but isn't currently going anywhere? Well, there's a few ways you can play it. And this is what Darren's been alluding to is theta plays. Playing some plays that give you some theta to where if it just goes sideways, you still make money. So we're looking at a 49.51 fair put spread. So basically we're saying 51, we want it to be above 51, that's a max gain. And if it's below 49, that's a max loss. You can see here, this is a pretty chicken trade. This is a pretty chicken trade. We're giving it two weeks, basically saying if it goes up and holds above 51, we're going to make a nice little profit. If it breaks down below 49, we're going to have a little loss. Again, these are the trades we really like at the moment. When we get to plus two, plus three, negative two, negative three, this is when we get aggressive. This is when we say, okay, let's go after the bigger wins. Right now with the market at negative one, most of the sectors at a zero, these are really the trades you want to make here. So that is on United Airlines. Financials is a sector I think held in fairly well. Last week, we had a sideways trade on CADE, 27.50 is the midpoint on that. So you can see here, it's acting really nicely. We have the 25, 27.50, 30. This thing is looking really nice. This should be a nice positive trade here on CADE. <coughs> on CADE. Moving next on to the bullish side. Again, this sector, when we take a look at all the sectors, it's been one of the better ones. It still went down, but it's been relatively better than the rest. Here we have the CME. This is the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. And you can see we are in this high base. We're in this high base ascending triangle. We just had a pullback from the high of five days, a very orderly pullback. This thing is saying, okay, I don't want to go down. The rest of the market has actually come down substantially. This one has not. This is the kind of trade we like to make when the market is a little bit bearish and we want to make some bullish trades. We want to find the things that have been holding up. Now, look, we're not going to ask this to do very much for us. We're saying, okay, we're looking at this in the range here. We like 185 to 190. This is the range we want to play. So this is where we pull out our diagonal call spread. We say, okay, we can do this. 190 is going to be our top. If it runs and takes off past 190, yeah, we're going to make a little less. We're going to make a little less. If it hangs out in this area, we're going to be nice. Break even on this is probably somewhere around 186, 186.50. So as long as it holds, as long as it holds up in this area, we're going to be profitable. It's only when it really dumps that we get into some loss. And this is where, again, we work with our traders and talk about delta hedging. We'll talk about exiting it. A lot of things you can do to make sure that you don't take that max loss here on your diagonals. And look at the consumer. Last week in consumer, we were long Foot Locker. We had the 42, we had the 45, 42, 50 bull put spread right there. So right now this closed at 4290. Uh, so we're probably sitting at a eh, little bit of a loss. We've got a week left to go. You see at a nice strong candle on Friday. So this is you just get back up towards there, you know, up towards that 45 level. You know, we put it on, let's see, at the beginning of the week, we probably put this on at about 40. 43.50 is if you got in on Mondays where, where you put it on or uh, you know, for long and you didn't have, this may not even have triggered for you. This is just one of those ones that we're looking. Um, you know, it was a long that we had to take to balance out our portfolio you know, with our market outlook. You know, this just isn't working out right now. We'll see what it does in the next week. We're looking at GameStop. Been a story stock last year and this looks like it's uh, you know, a good tradable stock right here. All right, so GameStop right now, it's, you can see it's in this kind of a low base right here. And it looks like it, it's just weakening right here. I mean, this thing has gone up, you know, went up to 24, just arced on over. And it looks like it wants to come down about that 19 level. So good way to play this. You know, you just look at an 18.20 bear, calls, uh, bear call spread right there. Uh, you know, $2 spread, you pull, a, this has got a little more delta in it than it does theta, but you still get a nice theta component to it as well. It just, if it just, hangs out at this rate, you're, you're going to be fine. If it goes down towards that 19, 18 level, you know, I, I think you're looking pretty good. And technology, 
Last week, we were uh, sideways and Splunk. We had the uh, March 3rd, 100, 105, 110 butterfly. And this is one of the ones that was hanging out there really nice and then uh, just kind of fell down. We're probably still at a break even right now, closed at 101.90. I mean, I, I would almost guarantee that's uh, we're we got a slight profit in it right now with a week left. So this looks like it wants to come back up towards that, uh, that 105 area. It's held out there nicely. This is one of the ones that we were talking about. It had been strong. You know, really hasn't moved a whole lot. You know, you just barely broke that uh, 20 period moving average on Friday. So uh, another strong one. If it bleeds back up towards 105, I think everybody's happy right now. This week we're going to STX Seagate Technologies. You know, and this right now is just in kind of a bull pullback. And you now what you want to wait on this one is for confirmation. I want to see a, a yeah, write that down, put exclamation marks on it. Do not get into this uh, too early. So what, what do we want to see in confirmation? I want to see a higher high and a higher low. If you want to give it two days, that's fine, but you can technically just do it on one. This is just a, a pullback to support. You can see we uh, put in a little bit of support, a couple there. So how do you want to play this? Go out to uh, February 17th and just do a 65-70 bull call spread. Excuse me, not February, March. Yes, go out to March, do that 65, 70 pull call spread. But again, wait for confirmation. Tattoo that on your forehead. Wait for confirmation on any bulls in this market. Last week in materials, we had Mosaic. You can see Mosaic had some nice candles. We gapped down on Tuesday, had buyers. We gapped up a little bit Wednesday, had buyers. Thursday, remember the market didn't do well on Thursday. This one did. Friday, the market didn't do well and it was closing positive. This has everything we like to see, and this trade is actually wrapped up. It was a 50-49 bull put spread, and it was a profitable trade. So we take those profits, and we just roll it into the next one. This week, we have Avantor Chemicals, more in the sideways to bullish. Another one of these stocks that is holding up. It's, it's not running higher. There's not a lot that is running higher in the market. So if you're looking to take a bull in one of these sectors, this is a stronger sector, and we've got a stronger stock. I have no idea if it's going to break out of 25 this week, next week. I don't even know if it will break out of 25. So I want to play this, not that I think it's going to break out and run, but that I think it's likely to hang out here until it breaks out and run. So this is where I'm going to be taking a look at a diagonal call spread going out to April on the long, the 25, sorry, the 22.50, and sell March is 25 against it. Now this is a little bit longer than I like to do diagonals, but this is the only thing that was available as far as a monthly option expiration goes. I wanted to be more bullish in this. I do think this thing is eventually going to move out of 25 and run. But remember with the diagonal call spread, you don't get any of that money. You actually get a little bit of a penalty if it runs. You get a little bit less profit if it runs. The way to change this is to do a ratio. So instead of doing like three long calls, three short calls, you do three long calls and two short calls. And what happens is it actually changes this upper part to look more like this. So as you can see here, you know, like it does move the break even down a little bit. We get a little steeper down here, but you can see this is just tilting it a little bit more bullish to where if it does take off and run, we actually get nicely rewarded from that just because we're in this ratio. I like this. Like I said, if this was a weekly expiration, if we had like March 3rd options, I would just sell it with no ratio. Because I can only go this far out, I want to be ratioed to take advantage of the potential for this thing to break out and make a nice run. In the energy sector, last week we were short in Entero Resources. Looked terrible, but you can see that uh, Friday it jumped and it jumped big, up 8%. This is where, again, if you were in a spread, you just, you already figured out what your max loss was going to be and you just let it ride. And if it keeps going up, then you're, you've already predetermined how much you're willing to lose and that's what your loss will be. The great thing about trading with spreads is that you've predetermined your loss. You can't lose any more than you predetermined. And that was a set amount of reasonable risk. Here's a great thing. This thing could easily go down 12% next week. And guess what? it'll be profitable. That's the great thing about spreads is it allows you to sit through volatility. We've all been in trades 
where everything was looking great, everything's looking good, and then one day something weird happens and it goes crazy against you. And a lot of times with stops, you're forced to get out. You're just forced to get out and you have to take your loss. But then three days later, everything reverses and goes back to exactly what you thought, but you're out of the trade at a loss when you were right. This is why we love spreads here, love position sizing for max loss, because we could easily let this one go. And guess what? If in the next week or two, it comes down, you're fine. You'll have a nice profit and you were able to sit through this little spike. If not, it's a loss. Big deal. This week, Exxon. I'm looking to be more sideways in energy, sideways to maybe slightly bearish in energy. So I wanted to go take a look at one of the biggest ones, one of the biggest slugs that doesn't move as much as all the others. So again, we just looked at Antero Resources. This thing's crazy volatile. 40 down to 24, that is crazy volatility. I wanted to find something that wasn't crazy. And I'm just looking at like a butterfly. So going out two weeks, just saying, okay, Exxon, I think the whole sector is going to be pretty flat over the next two weeks. I'm going to get the biggest slug out there, the one that is super stable and doesn't move much, and just play a butterfly for where it is. If it breaks out and runs above 115, it's a loss for me. If it breaks out and falls below 115 or 105, it's a loss for me. If it hangs out in this area, then that's a gain. That is a butterfly. That's exactly how a butterfly works. So I'm looking to be neutral here in the sector for the most part. Well, that wraps up our trades. Maverick traders, if you have some trades you want to share with the rest of the group, jump onto the forum and the website. You guys know where it is. Let's get that discussion going and make sure everyone has plenty of trades to take this week. Let's wrap this up. We're downshifting to neutral. For the last six weeks, we've been bullish. And a lot of people said, well, how can you be bullish? We still have all these problems. The reason is the price action told us to be bullish. So look, throw out everything you know or think you know. Let's, let's imagine that you just got out of a coma today. You've been in a coma for, for five years. You didn't even know COVID happened. And someone puts a chart in front of you. What is your opinion? That's how you want to look at charts. So if you had knew nothing about anything that happened and you looked at the chart, say, you say, Ooh, these markets look in a little bit of trouble. Six weeks ago, you would have said, Hey, this looks like a nice start of a new run. Now you're saying, okay, they look in a little trouble. So we're downshifting to neutral. This last old 15% rally, it might be done. We don't know yet. We need to get more signals, but they were likely going to come this week. In these weeks where we go from possibly a bullish lean to a bearish lean, or we don't know which way it's going to go, we're at a zero. There's no need to be hero. Just wait a week. Wait a week. Wait till the signals are more clear and then take your trades. A year is a very long time. A decade is a very long time. You have plenty of time. You don't need to be hero this week. Next week, hopefully we'll have a little bit more clear signals and we'll say, hey, let's, let's go get a little bit more aggressive. But until then, let's just uh, be cautious, play some chicken bulls and chicken bears and wait for a better signal. That is the trading room. Thank you very much. Take care, everyone. Goodbye. Good trade, everyone. Remember, hunt for theta. Hunt for theta.